Welcome to the International Word Center, a place where you can grow up in the Lord and become all that He's called you to be and do everything He's called you to do. So on behalf of Rick, that's me and my wife, Helen, thank you for joining us today for another episode of The Taught Word. Amen. Let's fellowship with God today. Let's get around His Word, uh, anointed Word. That's what I'm praying for and believing to get to and believing for today. So join your faith with mine and expect God to speak directly to your heart. And before we get started with the teaching today, we always like to take out some time to just offer up a prayer of thanksgiving to Father God, because he's been good to Ricky and Helen. Amen. He's been good to us. He's been good, good, good to us. If I took the time to tell you, we wouldn't have enough to time, enough time to tell you. Uh, let's let's just thank him today. Thank him, thank him, thank him for his love. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his grace. Amen. Thank him for his promises. Thank him for salvation. He's forgiven me. He's forgiven you of all your sins if you accepted the sacrifice of Jesus shed blood. He's made a way for us to enter into that everlasting rest and be with Father God and the Son for eternity. Hallelujah. Eternal life belongs to us. We've been born again. I've been born from above. Amen. We thank you, Father God, for our new life in you. We thank you, God, for adopting us into your family and calling us your own. Thank you for the precious gift of your spirit, God. Thank you for your love, your love, your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your graces, God. Thank you for your word, truth, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for providing and protecting. Thank you, Father God, for ordering our steps, God. Thank you, God, for hearing and answering our prayers. God, that's not all we're grateful and thankful for tonight uh, or today, whatever time of our afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. But God, we would just want to express our gratitude for how much we thank you, God, uh, for all the good things you've done for us, doing for us, and all the good things we're expecting you to do. Somebody say amen to that. God is a good God and he's worthy. He's a good, good father. Amen. He's perfect in all his ways. Amen. He never makes a mistake. Amen. Everything he does is good, good, good. Capital G double O D. Amen. He's good, 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 good. And as the songwriter said, he's good all the time and all the time he is good. Amen. Also, we want to say thank you uh, and uh, uh, express our appreciation for those who have helped support us, not just with your finances, but your prayers, as well as your talents. But we thank you for your giving that helps support this ministry. And we're just looking for God to do greater and greater things as we continue to press on and forget those things that lie behind us, but press on to the high calling that God has for us in the anointed one, Jesus. So thank you for your giving. If you want to give uh, and don't know how, just go to iwordcenter.org org or iwordcenter.church and click on the donate button at the top or if you prefer to mail in a donation just go to the bottom of any page on that website and there's a mailing address there for you don't forget to sign up for our newsletter uh, for 2021 we'll be coming out with some more news some great news so you want to keep up with us follow up with us uh, amen so do that and let's get ready to rumble. Amen. Let's get ready to get into the word. Amen. And just feed on, feast on God's word. Amen. God's word is living. It's, it's a living word. It's not just a written word, but it's a living word. And we're believing God today by the Holy Spirit to quicken to us a word today. And that's how faith comes. Amen. A living word and a living word can only be produced by the Holy Spirit. So father in Jesus name, come on, pray with me. Father in Jesus name, we're asking to give us today a living word, a word inspired by you, God, your Holy Spirit moving on me, Father, to speak as you would speak of what we want to hear today. We ask, God, that you would destroy yokes and remove burdens, that you would clear up misunderstandings and give direction and give correction today. We ask, God, that through the spoken word, not only would you exhort us and strengthen us and build us up, but Father God, that faith would be stimulated and that those who are hearing that have a need, it would be met. Healings, God, deliverances, answers to prayers, God. We ask that you would move by your spirit and do what you always do so well. Show us your love, God. Show us your love today and pour out on us according to your loving kindness. In Jesus' name, 
And Father, we ask for the gifts of the Spirit to flow as you will, Holy Ghost. We make room for you and invite you in to come and do whatever you want to do in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Well, for the past eight weeks, amen, we've been teaching on a subject of city limits. So if you haven't been with us for those eight episodes, you can go to our YouTube channel, amen, or you can just go, go to our website. And if you go in and type in to your browser, iWordCenter.Church, you'll see the teachings in chronological order. So you can just go down and look at them by date and listen to all of the episodes on city limits. You say, well, city limits, if you haven't been with us, let me give you just a brief, uh, not a, a review, don't have time today to do that, but a brief description of what we're talking about. Many of us that have come into church or have gotten born again, gotten saved, we hear all the good things that God will do for you. Uh, amen. The, the abundant life, the prosperous and health and healing and good relationships. But then you don't experience it. So you can sometimes become disillusioned and think it doesn't work or it's not true. But I submit to you today what this series on call City Limits is telling you or teaching you or revealing to you is that. The will of God is not automatic. All those things that you're hearing that are so wonderful that you want, that abundant life, that joyful, peaceful, healthy, prosperous life that God said he will give to you, it's not automatic. And a huge part of it, not the only part, but a huge part of it is you living within the city limits of God, within the kingdom of God. As Matthew 6 and 33 uh, uh, says, doing things, seek, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. One translation's amplified, the Amplified Bible says, doing things his way, doing things his way. So the city limits that this title is, is talking about is the boundaries or the borders are God's ways of doing things, God's way of living the things that God would choose and the things he would not choose. If you live outside God's ways of doing things outside his city limits, you won't be in position to receive all the good benefits and blessings that come along with your salvation. The inheritance that Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, Jesus the anointed one has left you. Amen. So let's get into today's teaching by starting with our foundational scripture, which is found in John 10, 10 and Galatians 6, 7 and 8. In the TPT translation, John 10 and 10 says a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter and destroy. But I have come, Jesus speaking, to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect life in its fullness until you overflow. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. Whatever you had before Jesus Christ, you should have it in abundance now and to the, to the overflow life, not death, not those things that take away, but those things that add to you. Peace, joy, love, long suffering, those things come out, gentleness, kindness, Hallelujah, health, soundness of mind, prosperity, faring well, doing well, divine protection. Amen. God has given those things to us, but we have to possess them out of faith and obedience. And the portion we're focusing in on this series of city limits is the obedience part. Now, it takes faith to live what we've been talking about. And we touched on that a bit last week. In our previous uh, the uh, number eight upload on this teaching, but obedience is learning what to yield to and what to resist. God tells us to resist certain things and to yield to certain things. And we've been camping on that part of being in position to receive all that God has for you. In Galatians six and seven through eight in the Amplified Bible, it says, do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at. Some translations say mocked. And that word mock means to be slighted or disregarded or neglected. In other words, you can't take God's precepts of like we're talking here, his ways of doing things and, and how to live within his limits, his boundaries to be blessed, to receive the blessings that are already given. Amen. You can't live out his borders. You can't yield to your flesh or the things of this world and expect to receive God's best and his blessings. But it goes on to say, uh, 
that for he, verse 8, for he or she who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap decay, ruin, and destruction. But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And then before that, I misread it. It says, for whatever a man sows, that and only that is what he will reap. You can't sow to your flesh and expect to reap from the Spirit. You can't sow corn and expect to reap wheat. Are you listening to me? Only what you sow or only what you obey or give attention to, whatever you do in your life is what you're going to reap from. So if you want to reap the abundant life, the good life that God has already ordained for you in this life as well as the one to come, you've got to learn what to yield to and what to resist. In the beginning, we talked quite a bit about the first sessions. We've talked about what to resist. And it's primarily found in Galatians, uh, the works of the flesh, that we have gone through all the different things of the works of the flesh and given definitions because you can't resist what you don't know. In other words, if you don't know what something is, you don't know to resist it. That's how people get con. That's how con artists work. They, they portray themselves as honest and they're dishonest. But when you can recognize the dishonest, you will not give yourself over to being tricked or deluded or conned. So in order to be able to resist the flesh and what it wants to do or lead you into, you got to be able to identify it. Uh, so if you, you, we could put another title, you could put a lot of different titles to this teaching. But one thing I want to point out, what we're talking about in a nutshell is living a life to be blessed is a way of thinking because you can't do anything unless you first think it. Amen. So when you're talking about what to resist and what to yield to, you need to understand and learn that the flesh going to work, the works of the flesh that we've been discussing over the past several weeks, it begins with a thought. It's a way of thinking, walking in the flesh or yielding to the flesh or walking in the spirit or yielding to the spirit is a way of thinking. So you got to watch what you think about so you can learn to resist. As the scripture says, casting down every thought and bringing every imagination into subjection uh, to Christ, to the anointed one, to God's ways of doing and being right. Now we spend a lot of time, like I say, talking about what to resist, but we want to switch the gears this week and begin to talk about what to yield to. And this is really what you should major on. You need to understand and know and be able to identify what the lust of the flesh is or what adultery is, what uh, envying is, uh, what variance is, uh, all, all those different things that are listed. And I'm quoting out of the King James because that's the, that's the translation, translation we use when we went through those. So go back and review those and get, those working, get a working uh, definition in your mind about those things so you can immediately say, uh-uh, that's the work of the flesh. Uh-uh, I'm not going to create no division. Uh-uh, you, you, are you listening? I'm not going to hate on them. Uh, that's I resist that. I cast that down. And we'll talk about some more uh, in the coming weeks on how to resist. And we have touched on it uh, through this series. But right now we're just identifying and letting you know that you need to learn what to resist and what to yield to if you want to walk in the abundant life that God has given to us. You must learn what the limits or the boundaries are of the city of God or the kingdom of God. Well, you know, we'll, let's talk just a little bit before we go on. I'm just prompted here in the spirit by the spirit of God to talk a little bit about how to resist. And we, we spoke on it. I don't know if it was in this series, but other series that two major ways to resist the devil is by opening your mouth and saying what the word of God says. So if there's thoughts that are coming to you to, to lie or steal, you need to open your mouth and say, no, I'm righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I've been born of God. I don't live that way. I am righteous and I am holy. I resist you now in Jesus name thought devil, get out of here. The thought will flee. And like we say, you can't do anything unless you think it. If you shut the thoughts down and think right thoughts, then you'll act and do right things. Now you need the help of the Holy Spirit 
to do all of these things, but you play a huge part by choosing it and you choose it by acting on what we're talking about, by act, act, acting on what you're supposed to act on. And then the Holy Spirit can jump in and help you. He doesn't do it for you. He's a helper, but he will help you as you begin to yield to the things of God. So let's talk about yielding today. Galatians 5 and 16. We're going to major on yielding. If you major on yielding, the resisting will become easier. It will be like, you know, second nature. A lot of people major on, oh, do I do that? Do I do that? Do that? And they look, focus and look on what they shouldn't be doing. I submit to you, when you focus on what you should be doing, then not doing the wrong thing, you, you don't have a struggle with. You have a struggle with yielding to the wrong things, yielding to the works of your flesh when you focus on that. But if you, as Galatians 5 and 16 says, says here, it says, but I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. You can't walk on two sides of the street at the same time. I mean, a normal, natural man, you understand what I'm saying? On a, on a nice, broad street, you got to choose what side of the street you're going to walk on. The moment you choose to yield to walk on the right side, you automatically won't walk on the left. You can't think two things at the same time. I know some people think they can, but you can't. Uh, so if you choose to focus on and think thoughts of spiritual nature based on the word of God that, that match up with what God would want to do. That's why when you open your mouth to resist wrong thinking or resist what the flesh is trying to do, it automatically changes what you're thinking and you begin to think about what you're saying. And if you fill your mouth on purpose with the word of God, then your mind becomes filled with the word of God. And then you are on the right side of the street automatically you leave the left side of the street. So that's why we're saying today, if you focus on what to yield to, the things that you should resist kind of becomes automatic. Are you listening to me? So these things, again, begin with a thought, a one little thought, but you gotta be able to identify it. That's why we spend so much time with the help of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, identifying and giving definitions of what the works of the flesh is. So when you see that thought, that one little thought that comes to mind, you can identify, oh, that's idolatry. I'm being selfish here. I resist that thought. Let me see how I can be a blessing and a benefit to this person versus, oh, I got to watch out for number one. Are you listening to me? Let's read Galatians, go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. We're going to talk a little bit today about what to yield to. We're not going to be with you real long today because we want to take this, the things to yield to. We want to really take them one or two or three at a time so that when we're done with this series, you've got a clear picture of how to live within the boundaries, the city limits of God, so you can enjoy the good life that God has ordained for you. So get your Bible, get your pad of paper, get your pen, your pencil, and write some of these things down so you can go back and study them over and over and over and over so you can meditate on it. So what to yield to begins with a thought. Amen. Galatians 5, 19 through 25. It says, now the doings, the practices of the flesh are clear and obvious. They are immorality, impurity, indecency. Now this is out of the Amplified Bible. Verse 20, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, ill temper, selfishness, divisions, dissensions, party spirits, factions. Now those party spirits are talking about factions, you know, like groups getting together. Uh, factions, sex with peculiar opinions, heresies, even en envy, <laughs> envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. And I warn you before, just as I did previously, that those who do such things shall not, say not, inherit the kingdom of God. 
The word of God is saying, if you habitually follow after the works of the flesh, you will cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You can't live within the city limits of God. You can't live in that place of blessing that God has ordained for you to live in. But in verse 22, it says in Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 22 says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and even temper or forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint. Against such things, there is no law that can bring a charge. And those who belong to Christ Jesus, you belong to Christ Jesus. Come on, lift your hand, identify. But those who belong to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature with its passions and appetites and desires. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward, walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. And then let's just kind of just put this in and paraphrase it. If you want to walk in the kingdom of God and have all the benefits of a, as a citizen of the kingdom of God, and Jesus said the kingdom of God is not a place, it's within you. So this is all a spiritual undertaking. So if you want to live in the spirit of God, you've got to learn to allow the Holy Spirit to produce in you those things we just listed, love, gentleness, kindness, meekness, by yielding to him and letting him work in you. And as we said, it begins in your thought life. He works in your spirit and, it, and your thoughts, the thoughts come up from your spirit. And if you, if you resist it, he can't work it in you. But as you yield to him more and 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 more, he will develop a strong, uh, a, a, a huge, a big, enormous love fruit in you. <laughs> big grapes of love. Are you listening to me? So when people see you come around, they will love you being around. You will represent God well. You'll be like Jesus Christ was on the earth. He was a man that yielded to the spirit of God. He thought on the things of God. He spoke on, spoke the things of God and he yielded to the spirit and did not fulfill or gratify the flesh that wants to do its own thing. Amen. So let's look at one thing, and we're just going to look at one thing today in this list of uh, many things that we just read of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and so forth. We're just going to look at one today and give you a better description and a better picture of what it is. And that first, first in the list of the thing that the Holy Spirit wants to work in your life, that if you want to live within the boundaries of God, live within his limits so you can be blessed. To be a blessing, that first thing that's in the list is what? Love. What is love? Come on. Love is not a feeling. Love is not an emotion. But love is a choice. Uh, one definition the Lord gave me some years ago was love is when we choose to do whatever benefits the other person before we even think about ourselves. Amen. And if, if you go into, let's look at this. Well, actually, in that particular setting, in the original language in the Greek, uh, the word that was translated there for love comes from the Greek word agape. But in the Greek language, they had several words for the word love. They had the word eros, where we get erotic from, which is a self-seeking kind of love. And it's usually er er evolves around sexual relationships. And then there's a word that's called stergo, uh, S-T-E-R-G-O. But it's limited more to like families or close friends. It talks about more of a devotion to someone or to something. And then there's filio, which is based on a mutual satisfaction that sometimes you can be get, get disappointed. And, and the picture is it's a type of love of friendship. But this love that God wants us to walk in and have a, 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 our minds influenced by with the help of the Holy Spirit 
is called agape in the Greek language. And this love is the kind of love that has no strings attached. It's not looking for what it can get, but it's looking for what it can give. In other words, you don't love people uh, for the purpose of getting something in return. You shower them with love simply because you love them. No matter what their response is or how they act or what they do, it does not change you when you're yielding to and developing in this love, this God kind of love, agape love. Amen. I mean, the other kind of loves is sometimes what we 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 think we're loving people, uh, where it's dealing, you know, the eros, where it's real selfish. You're really looking to see what somebody can do for you. And as we said earlier, it's more of a sexual kind of satisfaction. And that stergo kind of love is restricted by limitations. Like, you know, as long as you do right by the family and stay devoted to the family, then you're in. But if you don't stay devoted to the family, you're out. And that filial love is rooted in a mutual satisfaction that we, get, we, we share some things in common. But all these kind of, all those type of loves, amen, that we see expressed in, in relationships is a low level kind of love. But this agape kind of love, this God kind of love is a high kind of love. It's a love that has, as we said before, that has no string attached. It's a love that simply and purely loves you, the God kind of love. An example of it we find in John three sixteen, a familiar scripture. Amen. It says, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. God loved us so much that he was willing to give his son to free us from sin and eternal uh, being lost eternally. In Romans 5, 7 and 8, it says, Now it is, now it is an ex extraordinary thing for one to give his life, even for an upright man. We're talking about love today, the God kind of love, though perhaps for a noble and lovable and generous benefactor, someone might even dare to die. Verse eight, Romans five and eight, it says, but God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one died for us while you weren't even thinking about God. And he didn't know if you would even turn to him. He didn't even know if you would accept this awesome gift of salvation. He still did it anyway. And many people don't accept it. Don't let that be you. We're going to give you an opportunity if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life at the end of this uh, recording to give your life over to God and get born again. Amen. But God so loves you so much that no matter what you do, he still does what he's going to do. And we should be imitators, the Bible say, of our heavenly father. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can. Amen. So let the Holy Spirit go to work in you by yielding to him. When he gives you those promptings, those thoughts comes to you, thoughts come to you. Don't, don't, don't let it go. Forget about it. Forgive them. Uh, even though they cuss you out and said bad things about you, take them something, a gift anyway. Are you listening to me? The God kind of love does not do good because somebody else is going to do good. Or the God kind of love, this love that the Holy Spirit wants to produce in you, you've got to learn to yield to it because that's where the abundant living takes place. That's where the good life takes place when we learn to walk in love. Amen. And God is so good. He's wanting you to do, do it, but we, we play a big part. It's not automatic. You have to learn to yield to the Holy Spirit and it begins in your thought life, how you're thinking, what thoughts are you letting rumble around in your head? But it goes so much deeper than that. As you feel your mind that gets into your spirit, the word of God and the Holy Spirit will work in you as you yield to him and he will produce the God kind of love in you. You need to live. To, you need to learn to yield to that because what you yield to determines the kind of life you have. And so in order to have the kind of life that God has for you, you we must you, I must learn to continuously yield 
our beings, our faculties, all of our mind, all of our heart, our physical makeup, we must learn to yield or submit to the Holy Spirit and let him work in us. Uh, go to Romans 5 and 5 as we get ready to close. It says, such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Holy Spirit is pouring his love, pouring God's love into your spirit. And spirit is synonymous with heart. But you can still resist it and it does you no good. Paul put it this way. He said, I've been given abundant grace and I didn't frustrate the grace. In other words, he didn't. The grace of God wasn't in vain. He received the grace and did all that God sent him to do. He acted on the word. He did. He used the grace. He worked. He did what God told him to do. He yielded to God. And that's what we need to do today, my brother and sister. Uh, we need to learn to live within these boundaries and yield wholeheartedly to the love of God that the Holy Spirit is wanting to work in us and through us. In Romans 8, uh, the 12th through the 14th verse, it says, So then, brethren, sisters, we are debtors, but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature. Say that with me. I am not obligated to my carnal nature. You don't have to do what your physical makeup apart from God wants to do. But it goes on to say, to live a life ruled by the standards set up by the dictates of the flesh. Verse 13 says, for if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. And not just a physical death, but anytime you get into sinful acts and yielding to your flesh, amen, it, it, something dies. You get separated from something good. Your relationships can begin to die. Uh, uh, health, you get separated from health, living a sinful life or walking by the flesh. Uh, one time the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, it was a big thing about stress. It still is today. Uh, uh, people are so stressed here, stressed there. And the Lord said to me that all stress comes from the works of the flesh. When you yield to the works of the flesh, uh, the things we read earlier in Galatians, you will be stressed. But if you learn to resist the flesh and yield to the Holy Spirit, you will live a life stress-free. Come on, you want a stress-free life? That's the abundant living that Jesus has given you to give, has, has, that Jesus has given us to live, amen? But that it's not automatic, you play a part by choosing to resist the flesh and yield to the Spirit. But it goes on to say uh, in verse 13, it says, for if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Amen. That's good news. So take some time today, get your Bible out and go read these scriptures that we went through today. Focus on love and ask God to help you to identify as the Holy Spirit is empowering you and strengthening you and, and wanting you to walk in love. It's not automatic. You have to choose to follow after the Holy Spirit. The Bible says who you yield your members to, your faculty to, becomes your master. For Jesus to be Lord of your life, for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, you, my brother and sister, have to choose to yield to it. And so this series we've been talking about is helping us to do just that so we can identify readily and quickly what to resist and what to yield to. But I submit to you again, if you major on what you should yield to, automatically you resist what you shouldn't yield to. Amen. Hope you got something out of that. I know you did. If you've been listening with an ear to hear something from God, God is speaking to you right now, telling you to get in the flow, get on the go, do the things that you're hearing and watch things begin to turn around. You've been having challenges in your marriage, challenge with your children, challenges um, with your family members. Begin to walk in the spirit, begin to resist your flesh, begin to identify those things that God called out and, and begin to yield to those things that God calls in. Live within his boundaries and is so much freedom in the city of God. Amen. Next week, we'll pick up where we left off here and we'll get into talking about 
joy and peace. Amen. Getting a clear definition and understanding of what joy and peace is. It's not a feeling. It's a spiritual attribute that we need to learn to live in, walk in. Amen. And as we said earlier, walking in the spirit is a way of thinking. So come back with us next uh, episode at next upload next week and join us as we continually renew our mind on how to think right so that we'll know what to yield to and what to resist so that we can live the abundant life that Jesus has afforded us through his death and his resurrection. Amen. Well, before we go, let's offer the invitation to those out there who have never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You say, why do I need to do that? Well, let me tell you this. Uh, some people nowadays, there's a phrase out there that's saying, my truth, your truth. Truth is truth. Truth never changes. Now, some people say, well, no, this is my truth. I, you, I got it. No, truth is truth. I don't care. 2,000 years from now, truth will always be truth. And let me give you some truth today. The word of God says that all men and women are born in iniquity. We're born as sinners. Our nature is after the devil, which is a spiritual being that fell and lost its place with God. He's no longer righteous. He's mean. He's evil. And, he, and there's a, a bunch of angels that now are referred to as demons with him. And God's going to judge them all one day. And they're going to be put in a place for eternity called hell. That's what hell was designed for. But God created man in his own image. But somewhere along the way, Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, this is truth. They yielded themselves to the spirit of darkness. And when they did they died. They were separated from God and the nature of the devil became their nature, the nature of sin. And that nature is passed along to every human being born in planet earth. But God so loved the world, he didn't want to leave us in that position or in that state. So he has a plan of salvation for you and for me, whoever would choose to believe it and accept it, that you can be redeemed you can be made righteous. You can be restored back to the original tent that mankind was made for, to be God's family, to fellowship with him, to be in his house. Amen. So that plan of salvation is simply this. God gave his son, Jesus, who knew no sin. He took your place and my place, the whole world's place, and died in our place, which satisfied the judgment of God that the soul that sinned shall die. One man, Adam, disobedience brought all this calamity and sin into the earth. And then God said, one man, Jesus, obedience will bring salvation to whoever will receive it. So will you receive that salvation today? And God says, if you believe in your heart, what I just told you that you're a sinner and salvation only comes through one way, believing that Jesus died in your place and all the sins of the world, which includes yours, was placed on him, then you go free. And then if you confess with your mouth, you will have salvation. You will be redeemed from the hand of the devil. You will be made into a new creation. You'll be born again from above. You'll have the DNA of God. You'll be righteous. You'll be restored to the right place that God originally created you to be. So if that's you today, just pray this prayer with me and God will do the rest. Say, Father God, in Jesus name, I come to repent to change my thinking, my lifestyles, and whichever way you want me to change, I'm willing to do it. Show me what I need to do. I believe that this is all possible for you to forgive me because of Jesus. He died in my place, and I also believe you raised him from the dead. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you believe that in your heart, God's working in you right now, recreating your spirit into a righteous man or woman. Amen. But there's something else you need. You need help in how to live this life. Just like a little child needs parents to be reared up properly. You need help. You need help. And God knows you would. He knew you would need help. And what did he do? He's given to us the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. But you have to ask for him. The Holy Spirit will come in and baptize you. In other words, he'll come in and get inside this physical body with you. You're a spiritual being and he'll li live with you and be with you 24-7 to help you, 
to encourage you, to give you the ability to pray. Uh, he'll also give you the ability to speak in a language that the Bible refers to as tongues, to talk directly to God when you may not ha know how to uh, intelligently articulate it. He'll also lead you into truth, show you things to come. He will be your helper, your strengthener, your comforter. Amen. So just pray this with me. Say, Father God, I want everything that you have for me. So I ask now for the Holy Spirit. I ask that you would baptize me, fill me with the Holy Spirit and help me and teach me and lead and guide me and show me how to yield and pray in that heavenly language that you said you would give me. In Jesus name, I ask. Amen. Father God said in Luke 8, 11, 13, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, that's what he's going to give you. So expect, and sense, you're probably sensing it already, that the Holy Spirit will come in and begin to work in you. And as you yield more to him, he will give you words, not out of your intellect, but out of your innermost being, out of your spirit. It will begin to get syllables. Just yield to them and begin to speak him. He won't overtake you. He won't make you do it. You have to yield. God is good. He's awesome. He knows how you made up. He'll show you how to do it. Just trust God that he'll work in you. And this good thing he's begun in you today, amen, he'll bring it to completion. So until next time, remember who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we're free to walk around planet earth and do the will of God. Come on, get out there. Preach the good news. Preach the gospel. Let's populate heaven and plunder hell. In Jesus' name, amen.